Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, I am 40 metres above the city of Furt in Bavaria, and I've come here to find Roy the perfect bullet. This is all for Roy. Here he is putting an RWS round into his rifle, preparing to stalk a deer. But not just any RWS round, this is one which I am in Germany personally to watch being made. There's a lot more to it than brass, lead and powder. So we're high above the ammunition factory here and this is where they used to drop lead shots. And by the time it got to the bottom it was a perfect ball, ideal for your musket. Happily, ammunition has moved on a bit. The two core process is 80 years of history compressed into one bullet. They are made of different lead material. One is very hard for the back for penetrating the animal, and one is the soft and explosive front part that actually brings the animal down quickly, and that's what we all want. Roy's bullet is different. It has evolved. Indeed, it is one of the new evolution rounds. Not only does it look different, it behaves differently too with its rapid X tip. We leave the noisy factory for Hannes to explain. So this makes this bullet absolutely unique because it opens on all velocities. Even if you shoot very far out, this always opens and takes, gives a big punch to the animal. So these three files are three years of research. There's the gel block, there's mushrooming, there's the energy curve. And here we have four of the stages of the bullets it took to get to this, the final evolution. A lot of thought is going into this cartridge for Roy. A lot of thought, time and money goes into other bullets too. Heinz Rees gets involved in some pretty esoteric projects. For example, in one canton of Switzerland, Graubünden, shooters can only use 10.3mm ammunition for chamois. It's up to Heinz to come up with the best bullet for the job. So, Heinz, wie viele in, viel in Steinboxy schießen in Graubünden? Uh, each year, how many chamois do they shoot in Graubünden every year? Dreißigtausend. Oh, dreißigtausend. Oh, yeah. so quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So, so it is worth spending six months designing one bullet, yeah? Yeah, über in. You're looking at the period of twenty years. That's going bullet's going to be good in use for twenty, thirty years. That's definitely, it's going to pay out itself. So, we're good there. Und dann ist Aufwand gerechtfertigt. In Heinz Ries's office there is his wall of fame, his cutting-edge soft points, his ballistic brainwaves. Next to it is his newest creation. Now here's a bullet, a non-toxic round, that's not going to be launched until March 2014. A bullet so secret it doesn't have a name. It's time to leave Heinz's trophy room and get on with producing that cartridge. It's a 42-acre site, it's absolutely enormous and I'm a bit tired of walking. There's really only one way to get around here, and that's to get on your bike. We have seen the bullet construction. We are now on our way to see where they make the cases. So I'm in a room with the first of many secrets we're gonna to see today, and to explain them is Hannes Dickhoff. What kind of metal is this? This is a brass material. It's a copper zinc with 30% zinc here. That basically goes into our brass by high quality RWS cases. And well, I think within the next hours we will show you how we transfer this material here, which is pretty nice here, but into a neat little cartridge that later on be used for hunting. It's not just new metal. This stuff is expensive. They recycle here too. Prices for raw materials are going up more and more. They have more than doubled in the past few years and they account a major factor of the ammunition costs so therefore we treat them very carefully and put them back into recycling. This isn't just any old iron. RWS stress tests all the metals that make it to the site. There needs to be consistency. The bullet casing is far from uniform. Flexible at the neck, strong at the primer seat, the bullet is stress tested every five millimeters. What are you looking for? Ah, we are looking for tensile strength and elongation of the material. Yeah, so it's, it's nearly all, but we test this. this is, um, yeah, the, if all the material coming in has the right uh, parameter here, yeah, we need. And yeah. this one, Yeah. you're going to soften this one up a bit just to show that... Yeah, sure. So I can show you this is 
very uh, softened, but uh, when I do like this, I get a hardening in it. Okay. And then the material isn't the right one for us. Okay. When it's, it's hardened, yeah. Okay, so that's so. going to gonna make a different graph, yeah? Yeah, it's just, it's just going to make a different graph, yeah. Good, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, okay. The new graph shows that tampering with the metal's infrastructure has a big impact on the performance of the metal and, of course, the bullets leaving the factory. Now, from physics to history, the RWS story starts back in 1856 when a man called Heinrich Uttendorfer sold his Nuremberg-based ammunition company to RWS. The S stands for explosive in German, which is why the mayor of Nuremberg suggested it might be sensible if they weren't so close to the citizens of Nuremberg. They had to look for another space and RWS found this little area and this time it was greenfield, nothing was here. Um, it was in the middle of nowhere, no infrastructure, no water, no powerhouses, nothing was here. So, um, but it was of course very good for the production of ammunition because nobody was, could be hurt. So they said, okay, this is the right place and they bought over 25 hectares of um, this, this field here, area here, and uh, they started the production of ammunition. We find our way to the archive, which has some remarkable stuff, charting the history of bullets from, well, the days of powder and ball. There are contracts with monarchs, panjandrums and all the sheikhs of Araby. So uh, RWS seal, this has got history written all over it. What, what have you got here? It was a contract between the uh, um, RWS uh, with the um, Shah of Persia. So they got a huge amount of uh, rimfire cartridges and uh, yeah, it's just almost 80, 80 years ago. They, and those are the original 2-2 two, two rounds? This is uh, the original round and um, one of the last, I think, packages we could find here. So uh, still existing and I'm honest, I do not think that it's still working. After 80 years, it's possible yeah. that it's time to change your ammunition. Uh, yeah, definitely. And we have, a, I think, a better one now with R50, so uh, you should better buy that. Move on up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's running around these days? Exactly. <laughs> The site has evolved over the last 120 years. Nicole takes me on a quick tour of the place. As you can see, there are a lot of more trees than in the former times. Why do they have cows? I have to be honest, I have no idea why. This is the old chateau by the look of it. What, what, what went on in here? Well, in former days, um, the owners of the, of the company have lived here. Uh, this was a, is still the main building of the big bosses. Now we haven't lost sight of our main aim today, making Roy a deer stalking round. Let's get back onto the case, literally. Let's continue the process with case making. This operation sees the case pulled, stretched, lubricated, warmed, massaged, warmed again, relaxed, trimmed and buffed. You treat it like a beautiful woman. Absolutely. <laughs> no, tell me, tell me, talk to me through the process. Well, besides starting from the from the cup when it went in, and we did the first draw there. It gets washed, it gets heated, it gets the second pull. It gets washed in soap. Washed in soap. Yes, exactly. We need to get all the all the material that comes from the heat treatment off of the of the case again, so it's smooth for the next step. Anyway, we have to relax the material during every step that we do with that case. So in the end, it's treated better than most women are, I can tell you. It's a bit noisier than a makeover, isn't it? I think it's very noisy, it was a noisy sensation, but when you look at the finished product here that comes out in the end, you know, it's not just a case, it's a piece of art in the end. Now, bullets we've done, cases we have seen, the last two elements of Roy's deer round are primers and powder. RWS has a huge powder keg on its site. In here, it only stores 160 kilograms. Still, this is no place for a crafty cigarette. What you don't want to do is mix up your propellants. Each bullet has to have the correct amount and type of powder. It's a potent cocktail, but this guy is the Tom Cruise of propellants. did very badly at chemistry at school. I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, you do. must have done very well. <laughs> um, you're going to show me the difference between propellants, aren't yes. you? What, what is that difference? Yes, I want to show you three different propellants for the three different types of calibers. We have here the slowest burning three 7.5 Holland and Holland, and here we have a, a medium caliber, it's a 3.08 caliber, and here we have a 2.22 caliber, it's the fastest burning, and you will see, we will start burning here openly to see the, the different burning characteristics, so maybe we start. Let's watch this burn. Yes, <laughs> okay. Maybe 
That's fantastic. Now, if um, that is that slow burning with a 375, my buffalo is going to run away. Yeah, but the bigger caliber should burn, you need a b slower burning propellant. But in, in the close weather, the, the, the ammunition it burns rather fast and your buffalo will be shot. So. <laughs> On a slightly different scale, Roy, like many stalkers, is a home loader. He's done it for years and there's no denying the sense of satisfaction from rolling your own. But he's a busy man and will use an off-the-shelf bullet if it delivers the results. Well, his Evolution 3006s are just about ready. Well, we're a bit more technically efficient here in Germany. Let's see how RWS puts together a cartridge. So we've seen all the bits being made. This is where all the bits are put together. Here are the primers, there are the cases. This is what a box of primers looks like. Here are the cases with the primers inside them. Now, come over here. This is the machine where the primers in the cases and the bullets and the powder from up there all come together as one. They're checked by Aisha. Hello, Aisha. They're put in a box by Paraskevi. Hello, Paraskevi. And here is the box of bullets that will be used by Roy to shoot his deer. I'm going to write Roy's deer. Now we have Roy's bullets, we have to check they Thank work, you, and that is going to require more cycling. Pedal power is essential for checking targets in this particular indoor range. It's 500 meters long. There's only two in Germany, and one is owned by us, and the other one is a military one. And it's a unique place to test bullets under, under really extreme conditions and take all the side winds and all the other factors out so you can really see what the performance the bullet and the system delivers. We're going up the bullet drops bit. Yeah. While I continue to get a workout, Roy can now head out after his deer with his new bullets. We're on an estate in the southeast of England, complete with specialist on-site butcher's shop. Their big appeal is the top quality venison. Roy is helping out today with their deer management programme. He's been invited out by his friend Andy Prince to join him on a morning stalk. It's the perfect opportunity to try out the RWS Evolution. Even though I didn't get to go on the trip, at least they sent me some ammo, so cheers for that Charlie. We're going to be out today and uh, we're looking to get some venison in the larder for Chart Farm and uh, I think what we're going to be hopefully finding, we've got <laughs> quite a big selection of animals here, but what we're really looking to try and get on the deck and test the ammo on is a seeker pricket. So fingers crossed we should find a few and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how the bullet performs. Hopefully we'll see uh, some good results from it. So first thing to do is find your seeker. We seek him here, we seek him there. And he tells Roy where our best chances will present themselves. What we're going to do yep. is we're going to go to the bottom of the wood. Uh -huh. and there's a long ride and we're going to sit on, sit on, the, on the long ride looking down there. Yep. And hopefully uh, either a seeker cricket or a fallow cricket will present itself for a shot yep. as it comes down through the wood. OK, fingers crossed. There we go. Yeah, hopefully we'll get, we'll get a long yep. enough chance. But. All right, lead the way. Let's leave them to it and head back to the range where we are going to test Roy's bullet batch at 100 metres. The boffins fire five shots at the target through the test barrel. It's a good group, but what happens when we turn up the heat? Shooting is not always in, in, in one temperature area, like room temperature. Hunting sometimes goes very cold in the Alaska area and then also gets very warm in the desert. So we got to also cover that part of, of hunting and make sure the ammunition shoots under all conditions. While we wait for the ammunition to freeze and cook, Hannes holds an unusual weapon out of the armory. This is a relic from the 80s designed around a caseless bullet. We invented the caseless ammunition for this beautiful rifle. It was ammunition that had actually no case, so the powder was just compressed around the bullet and was inserted here in the magazine here without case. So that reduced the weight for the soldier tremendously. And did, was this ever put into use? It, it actually it never came into real use with the, with the service forces. But it must have been a huge project. Yeah, we worked for it for, I, I think, almost a decade or something. 
And so. have, have we ever seen this on, on television before? Has this, has this been shown? This? It's first time, I think. The hot and cold ammunition is now ready. It's a test that's above and beyond what Roy's bullets will endure today in the early autumn sunshine. But hunters can travel the globe with a single box of bullets. We start with our unadulterated rounds, then... So I'm now going to break out the Arctic ammunition with a hammer. Next it's the hot stuff, 54 degrees for 24 hours and the standard test for NATO. So what have we got? We must be pretty happy about that. Wow, that's amazing, huh? That's two hot dead deer, two cold dead deer and two ordinary dead deer, isn't it? Absolutely. So here we have a group of two cold one shots and one hot one here. That's an ordinary, ordinary one and that's a hot and an ordinary shot here. So it's over 70 degrees. Celsius temperature spread. That's amazing, amazing picture. Groping. Well, they are accurate, but are they effective? The way to find that out is to go back to Heinz Reese and look at some gel. It knocks his block off. Yeah. Well, you can see a quick reaction in the bullet right at the very beginning after less than an inch. And then you have a long and very heavy wound channel and a deep penetration due to the, to the high mass that the bullet keeps. This is perfect. Encouraging news for Roy. Andy has put him in a position where deer should cross a ride in front of us, making for the wood. They're 170 metres away. Unfortunately, nothing is stopping, and if it does, it's all youngsters and females. In Germany, we're being led to the kitchen. Not for some tasty German sausage, but ballistic gels. They cost loads, so we want our money's worth. We're going to be shown what the bullet has been designed to do. See the peak of the destruction of the killing force of the animal, of that bullet, is right where the heart is. This would be this slice here, that's the part where the deer has the heart. Oh, I can mark it for you. That's really Nicely. Sweet. And you can show that to Roy and say, obviously that deer has to go down pretty quick. You want to colour it in? Well, it's, I think it's good <laughs> enough like that. <laughs> this is like the inside of a deer. From 5 centimetres to 15 centimetres is where all that energy is packed. And this is what happens inside the deer. It is the, what's the word, Hannes? Temporary stretch cavity. Temporary stretch cavity. Roy, you've got a temporary stretch cavity. To be honest, Roy has other things on his mind. He's moved and stalked into a group of deer grazing in the open. His patience has paid off and we've got a seeker spiker right where we want him. It's a 120 metre shot, but as Ruag executive Matthias Vogel explains, ammunition is a way to bring you closer to your quarry. When you look at the history of, uh, of hunting in general, um, the distance between the animal and the hunter even grows more and more. We start with a stone and then we follow up by, by some spear and then we go to bow hunting with arrows and then rifles and rifles with scopes. So the distance between the animal and the hunter becomes even bigger. And I think this is a great challenge also for ammunition and bullet development. This is a very German idea of, of heritage meaning modern thinking, is that right? Yes, heritage means experience, and experience has room to improvements, and then investing in German engineering technology, and this came up to good products, I guess. Vorsprung durch Technik. Pardon? Vorsprung durch Technik. Vorsprung durch Technik, this means Audi, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Your German is very good. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I, un <laughs> I understood every word I said. <laughs> Back in the UK and after the days, weeks and years of development and rigorous testing, it comes down to this moment. Roy has a deer in his sights. <laughs> Roy shoots and the young seeker pricket drops. The slow-mo picks up the silver evolution bullet just as it reaches the animal. The force from the RWS round is clear. Initially when we saw him, he was obviously covered either in front or behind by hinds, so we couldn't take the shot. And uh, he finally just came clear and we had enough room just to tuck the shot in. And I'm hoping the high speed looks as good as it should do because the, uh, yeah, the light out there is absolutely superb. But from the, the, the bullet's perspective, the seeker dropped absolutely spot on. So, uh, you know, there was no, no running on. So it'll be quite interesting when we uh, go back to the larder and do the growlick and just see exactly what's happened in there. But yeah, definitely impressed so far. Perfect shot. That's it, no issue with that. 
Seeker are lovely looking animals and this healthy young male will soon be in the larder. No food miles here. Back in the yard we granic the deer and Roy can study the vital organs. They were saying at the factory apparently that the, the round should give up all of its energy about 10 centimetres into the body and that would have been pretty much spot on for the heart there and for me to be able to see a seeker drop on the spot like that with a body shot I'm very happy with that so if we just rearrange well, look, rearrange the heart onto the side of the body and the lungs where it would have been you can just see the tremendous amount of damage and you can actually see here so highlighted exactly what the bullet's done it's just taken a massive channel and just obliterated the heart top of the lungs and channeled all the way through just as Hannes explains, with the gel results and a temporary stretch cavity, the sweet spot for this bullet is when it reaches the heart. And that's just the way it plays out, giving a neat exit wound and good meat preservation. What a result for Roy. But what about me? How am I going to smuggle all that bullet schmuck, that shiny jewellery, that Tom, out of the RWS factory? Well, we are back next week, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen, or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter, or Tumblr, or WordPress, or Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. This has been Field Sports Britain from the RWS factory in Germany, where I have got an accomplice. Run for it, Katerina! If you want to see our regular Field Sports Britain items, please click on the links on the screen or go to our YouTube channel.